This video is going to be a film study look at the impact that Iman Ross St. Brown had in the Lions' 31-29 win on the road against the Vikings in Week 7. If you don't know, St. Brown was 8 of 8 catches for 112 yards, one touchdown. But check this out. In the last four games, kind of maybe lost a little bit amongst how efficient and high percent Jared Goff has been. St. Brown has equaled it or perhaps exceeded it. He's 25 of 26 catches to targets in the last four weeks. His four touchdowns have come during that stretch, totaling basically for the year, 39 catches on 50 targets, 74% catch percentage. Remember those first two weeks where golf was having trouble getting the football out to his first or second read? What were teams doing? Now if you look at it after six games, golf is absolutely on fire, potential MVP candidate. St. Brown, 39 catches through six games, 74% catch percentage. His yards per catch are lower than 2023. I think he's at 10.3 last year. It was like 12.1, 12.4, somewhere in that range. He had a huge reception in the fourth quarter when the Lions were slow playing it to basically go down and, and sell out for the, for the game-winning field goal by Jake Bates, which they, which they converted. St. Brown, if you ask me, has been one of the most fun players for me to watch. As an initially non-Lions fan, at the end of the video, I'll talk to you about some observations I made after probably watching him play about three or four games in 2022. And then thinking back on some of those observations now, it's kind of fun for me to think about. But let's get into the film. We're going to focus on, I think, six plays here. Like I said, eight of eight catches. Not going to show every single one, but really cool end of the first quarter play that is a little bit scary. If you recall, St. Brown looks like he's kind of hurt. Don't ask me why those graphics are all coming up crooked. I'm doing something wrong with my output. But it's a second and six, last play of the first quarter, and the inside linebacker to that side, where St. Brown is, is going to blitz. He's going to walk up into the B-gap, and you got basically a two-on-two -two out here in space if you're a spread football team, which I wouldn't say the Lions are, but one of your rules is uncovered. you got to get the ball out quick. Take those yards when they give them to you. In this case, Pace steps up. Easy for Goff to flip the ball out there. I think that was the play anyway, but just illustrating to you that sometimes walking up an inside linebacker from the second level into the defensive line area kind of opens yourself up to those horizontal screens, St. Brown for eight yards. Second quarter here, early second quarter. This is while Detroit is, is absolutely just lacing Minnesota's defense. Three touchdowns in the second quarter. There's a big completion to St. Brown here, along with a roughing call uh, on pace. I thought he could have got a second one in this game, but St. Brown's trying, excuse me, Montgomery is trying to stick with pace here. You can see the large lane that there is. St. Brown's going to bring his route across the field. We'll go back to the all 22 in a moment over the top of the second level. It's actually a, a hybrid safety linebacker in number 44. Dangerous low hit by uh, pace who was dealing with a block at the time or an attempted block by Montgomery. Early on the fourth possession, Still same play, all 22 angle. St. Brown from the bottom side of the screen, kind of one of these patented over concepts that he uses a lot, emanating from one side of the field, 10 to 12, 14 yards depth, getting to the other side of the field underneath of a vertical route, essentially a clear out by an outside wide receiver. Keep that in mind as we get to his big catch with 120 left in the fourth quarter to basically put the Lions in incredibly high percent opportunity as far as a game-winning field goal. Second quarter, this is going to be his touchdown. I've talked about this in the Jared Goff film study video I did earlier. If you're in my Lions Discord, you saw this play late last night. The film was out really, really quick. The one thing to mention here is you've got multiple wins. Uh, as Patrick motions through to help pass pro on the edge, basically creating a two-on-one with Montgomery and Patrick on the outside linebacker edge defender, Andrew Van Ginkle. Watch what Jamison Williams does to the bottom side corner here. If you wanted to throw the football to Williams on this out and up, you've got a 35-yard touchdown there as well. Goff looks to the side. If you didn't watch my Goff video earlier in the day, sticks blitz zero. These guys are taught to look at the quarterback, and in this case, that's why he's breaking here. Very unsound. Easy seam touchdown pass for St. Brown. But focus on Jamison Williams again on this little out and then up. Absolutely over if Goff wanted to. He could have possibly held on to the ball a little bit longer, thrown it down vertically to Jamison Williams for an easy touchdown. As it stands, this one puts the Lions up 14-10. to 10. I'm guessing that once 
St. Brown got, got inside here, meaning he was he released to the inside of that second-level defender. He probably thought the free safety was rolling over. I think it's Bynum. Okay, talked about a moment ago, Bynum is being manipulated or triggered down to the bottom side of our screen, the left-hand side of the Lions offense, by Goff's eyes, his face mask, where he's looking. And St. Brown's really never been this open, except for, I think, one touchdown against the Packers in 2022. End zone angle, same play, sticks blitz zero. Goff is bringing Patrick across to help with the edge defender, along with Montgomery. Those two guys can handle Van Ginkle. Goff looks to the left, like I've said a couple of times. You can see that holds Bynum. Up top, St. Brown, huge win, easy catch. Fourth touchdown of the, of the season so far. Incredibly high efficiency level recently. Like I said, 25 of 26 catches in the last four weeks. A snag that basically ends up looking like a blitz replace here. I'm not so sure that it is, in fact, a blitz replace, but you do get a blitz by 44, the inside linebacker slash safety, and he's, he's clean. He's free. The spike to the inside by 99 into the A-gap pulls the guard, and you can see 44 is free run right at golf. Montgomery can't get there because of the design of the play, and so fortunately, St. Brown sits his route down. Same play, end zone angle, by the way. So this D-tackle is going to spike in here. 44 blitzes what ends up, I think, through the B-gap. Decker is stepping out. You kind of are going to lose him in a moment, but Laporta is going this way, running the flat route, and St. Brown's just going to snag or sit this down outside of the hash, in between the hash and the top of the numbers. Credit to Golf. He took a huge shot there. I'll replay it one more time. Credit to Golf for, for recognizing it, getting it out quick. Ends up being a 12-yard gain. Like I said, during that, it's fifth, fifth possession still, during that time period where the Lions are in control offensively with the pass game specifically, but in, in certain instances, the run game, most notably Jameer Gibbs' 45-yard touchdown to put him on the board after falling behind 10-0. Moving to the fourth quarter here, we're skipping a couple of seven-yard and a three-yard catch by St. Brown. To the downside of the screen, this is third and two, about 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. You're up 28-20. to 20. Unfortunately, Detroit not able to score on this particular possession. But you can see St. Brown took his route to the outside just enough to get Harrison Smith to commit in that direction. And then he brings it back under, kind of like this deep out dig. Goff's got enough arm strength to get it there. He'll give the end zone angle, then the all 22 one more time through. Great effort by Pace here. He's just a pain, man. He just He's a guy that's involved in everything. He's very active. I didn't know that he was... This good of a football player, uh, despite the, the roughing penalty that he got on golf and another one that I think was close, able to try to swim by the right guard and then elevate. And you can see how close this is to golf not being able to get this throw off on a third and two. Like I said, they didn't score on that possession, but it, being able to retain the, foot, the possession of the ball a little bit longer helped them out, obviously, near the end. Let's go back to the all 22 one more time so you can check out. St. Brown's route, if you're not sure what I was talking about. He kind of brings it back out here. Not as far as I've drawn that line, but I did that for purposes of exaggeration. And it just holds Harrison Smith to the downside of the screen. Corner is being held by Laporta into the flats. And you can see St. Brown opening his, his face mask towards the sideline, but not his hips. Gets Harrison Smith to commit. Brings the route back under. Great catch. Spearing catch in the air. For 16 yards. Now, the big one that I think is uh, possibly one of the plays of the game. Hey, give Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson credit for slow playing it the way they did and basically giving Minnesota very little opportunity. In this day and age with kickoffs that go into the end zone, starting the offense from the negative 30, it doesn't, you don't need very many yards to get in field goal range, particularly with Minnesota's kicker. Apparently, they were considering lining up for a 68-yard field goal to win the game. Pretty unbelievable, if you ask me. So with a minute 18 here, this is preceding the one run by Gibbs and then the two kneel downs, and then Jake Bates' 44-yard field goal to win the game. St. Brown from the top side of the screen and 12 personnel. I'm going to do a 12 personnel, probably ace video this week on the Lions. So ace, one tight end to one side, one tight end to the other, quarterback under center, receiver, and receiver. It's a formation Ben Johnson uses 
often. And in this case, it's basically an over concept whereby Laporta is holding underneath on the hash. And then you've got this route here is designed to hold this defender, give him two points of, of conflict, if you will, so that St. Brown's route over the top can be available. Gilmore's going to fall off or basically peel off the vertical by Tim Patrick. Try to break down there. He's just too late upon arrival. Harrison Smith is able to take it. Great challenge by Harrison Smith. The throw from the end zone angle, I was hoping that the end zone angle was from behind the offense. Unfortunately, it's behind the defense. So you're losing St. Brown. as You can just barely see his helmet right there outside of my graphic. Laporta and the running back Gibbs in the flats are kind of holding pace, and you can see how brilliant of a catch this was with, I think, 120 left, 121 left or something like that. The clock runs to 118 somewhere in that time frame. Brilliant catch, if you ask me. Just It illustrates how reliable St. Brown is anyway, but how reliable and consistent he's been lately. Eight of eight catches to targets yesterday against the Vikings. 25 of 26 in the last four weeks. Almost hilarious how efficient him and Goff have been. How long can they keep this up? How long can those guys play at this level of efficiency? It, it almost looks like they're an SEC team playing a small school at home. That's From an offensive standpoint, from a passing game efficiency standpoint, I think it's pretty unbelievable what St. Brown's doing, what he did yesterday against the Vikings team. Very physical. Unfortunately for Minnesota, I think the matchup in terms of their pass defenders against St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Tim Patrick, Raymond, and Laporta, I think it's a bad matchup. In my opinion, it is tilted or skewed in the Lions' favor. They have better receivers and tight ends than the coverage guys assigned to guard them. I wonder if we might see more blitzes from Brian Flores the next time that Detroit matches up with them in at home. As far as my St. Brown... Uh, origin story. I started watching the Lions, I believe, after their loss to the Eagles in week one of 2022. If I recall correctly, the Eagles got up by 14 points, maybe 17 a couple of times. Detroit kept battling back. I think scores a late touchdown to make it look closer than it was, meaning Detroit did not have the football to finish the game. The Eagles did, and in fact, I think Jalen Hurts converts a fourth and three run play to hold on to possession of the ball to finish the clock. I might be wrong on some of the details. By Thanksgiving of that year, I had probably been in conversation with my wife two or three times such that I said, hey, what do you think it would look like if I tried to do film study videos on a second team? Detroit's already, I think, playing much better football. They, they defeat the Bills on Thanksgiving Day. James Houston IV has two sacks. They, they lost, lost to the Bills. My apologies, 28-25. James Houston IV has two sacks. They play extremely well against them and then go on a run by week 11 or 12, somewhere in that range. I remember calling a football coaching friend of mine and saying, hey, man, what do you know about this St. Brown guy for the Lions? And he was like, not much. He didn't really have much to say. Probably the same perspective or answer I would have had about three, four, five weeks prior. And I said to him, I said, I'm watching this guy play, and he just looks like you're, you guys are not going to like this comparison because you're Detroit people. He reminds me of Joe Frazier, like just a really great little man in boxing, the heavyweight ranks, and St. Brown being smaller than a lot of NFL receivers that play at a high level. I was like, he just he's just constantly around the football, high percentage guy in terms of catches. And to me, watching him, this is my statement at the time, to me, watching him, he looks like a guy that six, eight, ten years from now, we're going to be saying, hey, he's a Hall of Famer. I remember having that conversation with a good friend of mine, like I said, who is who is still involved in coaching. And looking back on it now, my thoughts are the same. Because St. Brown just seems to be a guy who, no matter who you put him up against, he's going to produce. Are there games where it takes, I think like Tampa Bay, I believe it was Tampa Bay this year, 18 targets for him to get 11 receptions? Yes, there are, but when you put him in a situation like this against the Vikings where you have a matchup advantage at two, three, four spots in pass, as far as the pass game goes, you get games like this one. Eight for eight catches to targets, 112 yards, one touchdown. I thought it was a brilliant performance by the Lions offense after 
a difficult start going for it on fourth down, the fake punt, excuse me, first possession, getting stopped on the second and third possession, and basically going on an absolute tear against the Vikings defense that was only allowing, I think, 15.2 or 15.8 points per game, something like that. In any case, forgive the digression there about how quickly I thought I recognized the ability of Iman Ross St. Brown to impact NFL football games. Of course, at that point, 2022, he's in his second year. It's been a fun player to watch Sunday even more so because his clutch catch was his eighth of the day and put the Lions in situ- in a situation where they could drain the clock a little bit before taking a knee twice, letting Bates drill a 44-yarder. Fun afternoon to watch a football game. I don't know about you, I was celebrating after I saw Bates kick go through the uprights because I felt like at that point, 15 seconds left, it was pretty much over. Had a little bit of nervousness or consternation in the final moments there, but Appreciate you guys' time, man. If you enjoyed the film study video, let me know in the comment section. As always, please like and comment down below the video if you'd like to see this content get more reach to other people. As an aside, I will have a possession-oriented video coming out about the Lions perhaps Monday night after the Monday night football game. I'm going to be really busy with the Ravens visiting Tampa Bay to play the Bucks, obviously. So look forward to that content. If it's not out Monday night, it'll be out Tuesday afternoon. Appreciate you guys' time.